Hello all, welcome to part 34 of Test NG training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate why we have to use object class array to return the data from the data provider methods. So let's get started. So why we have to use object class array to return the data from the data provider methods is something we have to understand from this session. For that, I'll practically demonstrate, guys, OK? I'll practically demonstrate. Then you will understand why we have to use object class array to return the data from the data provider methods. First, I'll go to the Eclipse ID, guys. Here, I'll create a new class. Freshly, I'll create a new class known as demo class. Click on Finish. For example, I'll create a test method and a data provider method, just for sample. Public void, OK? Public void, I'll say sample, guys, OK? I'll just name the test method as Otherwise, I'll simply say sample test. It will look more good and better. Okay, sample test. Add the rate test over the mouse and add the rate test and import this annotation. Import this add the rate test annotation from test ng guys. And now here parameterize this particular test case. Okay, parameterize this particular test method so that it can receive the data from the data provider methods or data supplier methods. So I'll simply say string a comma string p. Okay. Two parameters I created. I parameterize this uh, test method, and this test method is going to receive the data from a data provider method. So whatever the data that this particular test method will receive, right? Whatever the data that this particular test method will receive, right? Okay, that will be okay. That I'll be printing here as it is. Nothing much. Okay, I'll be printing this. Whatever the data that is uh, uh, received into this parameter. Right? parameters of this uh, test method from the data sub data provider methods, right? Okay, so multiple sets of data will be passed to this test method by the data provider methods and whatever that multiple sets of data will be received by this test parameterized test method will be printed here. That's what is the output. I'm not writing a real realistic Selenium automation code or register should API automation code or APM mobile automation code. I'm just writing a sample print statement. Our focus is mainly on understanding the why we have to use object class array to return the data from the data provider methods. That's the focus point, guys, okay? So public void, I'll create a data provider method. I'll say data supplier. I can give any name, guys. I can give any name. And here I'll say add the rate test. Sorry, add the rate data provider, guys, okay? I have to uh, provide this test ng annotation known as data provider annotation. Import this data provider annotation from test ng. And here I'll name this, I'll name this data provider method as a, Supplier, okay. Supplier, uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, supplier, okay. Supplier will be enough. Now here, I need to connect this data provider with this test method so that data provider can this particular test method can receive the data from this uh, supply uh, uh, supply data from this data provider method. For that, I have to use an attribute as you already know from the previous session. We have to use an attribute known as data provider is equal to then name of the data provider that is supplier. Okay, just provide that here. Now this test method and data uh, provider methods are connected, guys. Now, what I want to do is I want to provide the data here. Which type of data is being received by this uh, test method? The data provider can supply string data, right? String A, string B. So, what I will do is I will create a two dimensional string array. Uh, I'll say data is equal to. I'll provide the curly braces, shortcut representation of the array. I'll say in this, let's I want to supply some three sets of data, some three sets of data. Okay. So I'll just give that here. So every set of data should contain two data count because here two parameters are there. Every set of data that is being supplied by this data provider method should contain the count of two data. Okay, I'll just give my name, first name and last name, that's it. Okay, like this. Here also two sets of two counts of data in this second set of data. Okay, I'll just give Varun. I'll say Dawat. Then I'll give Tarun, I'll say Baskar. Three sets of data, guys, okay? And all these three sets of data in the string format only. So string array is okay. String, string two-dimensional array is okay, guys. I'll return the data now, return data. When I try to return the data, guys, the return type should be string two-dimensional array, as you already know from the previous sessions, right? 
So now, if I run this test method, what will happen? This test method will receive the data from this uh, three sets of data from this data provider method in the string format because the parameters are also in string format and the data that is being supplied also in the form of string format, okay? So Arun will go into this string A, Motori will be going into the B, string B, okay? Varun will go into A, Dawad will go into B, Tarun will go into the uh, A and Bhaskar will go into C. B and this test method will be running three times because three sets of data are there in this data provider method. Run this, guys. It will be test method. The sample test method will be running three times with three sets of data. For each and every set of data, it will be running three times. You see, Arun Motori, Varun Dawat, and Tarun Baskar, three times it got run, passed three. If you go to this test engine results also, you can see that sample test method got run three times. Okay? Arun Motori, Varun Dawat, and Tarun Baskar. So I'll do one thing. What I will do is, what I will try to do is here, instead of giving, instead of passing strings, I'll pass some numbers, guys. Okay, nine, five, nine, five, seven, three, six, two. Is it accepted? You see, I'm already getting the compile error saying that this is a string two dimensional array. How can you pass the integer values? So, if you can remember guys, there are, okay, wrapper classes in Java. There are wrapper classes in Java, okay? What are these wrapper classes? For each and every primitive data type, what are the different primitive data types in Java guys? Int primitive data type, okay? Short, byte, int, long, float, double, char, boolean. These are the eight primitive data types. For each and every primitive data type in Java, there is a wrapper class. For int primitive data type in Java, we have integer wrapper class, okay? If I have to explain it clearly. Just see here, there is a concept known as wrapper classes. But before that, there are primitive data types, byte, short, int, long, float, okay? If you know Java, these all, okay, that you already would have known, okay? Byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, boolean, okay? These are the different primitive data types. These are not object-oriented. These are primitive data types. To convert this object, sometimes you have to use this primitive data types as object-oriented. That's why Java has given us some wrapper classes for each and every primitive data type here. Da Java has given as a wrapper class known as byte. Okay, you see, it is a class case. It's not a, it's an object-oriented class. Here, byte is not a class, it's not object-oriented. For short, it is short. For int, it is integer, guys. For long, it is long, uh, long. For float, it is float. For double, it is double. And for char, it is character character and for boolean it is boolean guys okay for boolean it is boolean like this okay primitive data types and okay this side wrapper class associated wrapper classes so here here for storing this uh, two dimensional integer values i'll be using the wrapper class these are integer values right i'll be using the wrapper class known as integer here also i have to return type as integer and here also i have to say integer a integer a wrapper class with integer b like this i have to store Inter instead of string class i'll say integer okay now it will work fine okay it will work fine guys okay three times this test method will be called every time you see integer values will be uh you see nine five seven three six two got run okay the sample test method got executed three times this time with integer values okay similarly what if i want to do something different where this part okay i i'll give more uh, parameters here. I'll just give more parameters, integer C like this. Three parameters, for example, first parameter I'll give as Arun. Second parameter I'll give as five. Third parameter I'll give as uh, some true, okay? Some true, Boolean value true, okay? First set of data is containing three types of data here, okay? One is string data, other one is integer data, other one is Boolean data. Second also same thing I'll do. I'll say Arun, Varun, three comma false i'll say okay then here also i'll say tarun two comma again true i'll say okay but you see can i store different type of data into a variable of integer two dimensional array it's not possible here each and every set of data is not sticking to either string type of in integer type so this is string, this is a number, this is a Boolean value. So what I will do is instead of providing either string class or integer, I'll just provide object because 
object class is the parent class of all the classes in Java. Now you see errors are gone. I cannot put it either string. If I put it string, I'll get error. You see, if I put it string class, I'll get errors here. You see, five and true are giving error, three and false, two and true are giving errors. If I give integer here, integer here also I'll get errors with the strings and Boolean values are true, were false and are true are not accepted. But if I give object, any type of data can be accepted because object class is a parent class of all the classes in Java. That means object class is also the parent class. If object class is a parent class of all the classes in Java, object class is also parent class of all these wrapper classes in Java. Hence, any type of data can be stored into the object class. Even string is also a class in Java, guys, okay? Apart from this wrapper classes, string is also, string is not a wrapper class, but it is also a predefined class in Java. Along with this wrapper classes and uh, string class, all these classes have the parent classes object class. If I have to show you practically, let me take you to the library of Java. Java 8 API or something I'll type here. You'll get this link. Just take anything guys. For example, if I take you to the string class, okay? Let me take you to the string predefined class in Java. This is a string predefined class in Java. This is the library of the Java guys. As you can see, the parent of the string predefined class is object class. Not only this one guys, randomly pick something uh system tooth uh, tip ui you see system tooth uh, pick ui is also having some grandparent as object class or, or go to this timer you see timer is also having the object class if you go to the wrapper class say integer integer wrapper class it also has the object as a parent class so no matter what class you will take object class is the parent class of all the classes in java including this wrapper classes and the string classes hence any type of data uh you if you give multiple types of data in a single set of data Okay, which is being passed from the data provider to the test method. You can just name it as object class, guys. Okay, okay, you can name it as an object class, and here return type also should be object, object class, because object class can store any type of data because this will be converted into the wrapper class objects, and uh, ultimately wrapper class objects are the child class object class, hence this different type of data can be stored into the object class. Okay, and here you see, here I'll say object A object B, object C, like this, okay? They can accept anything. It don't have to be string or uh, integer or it uh, don't have to be Boolean. You can simply say object A, object B, object C. And here I'll say plus, use concatenation operator and say plus C. This time you say it will work. That's the advantage of using object array. Okay, now save this and run this test. This test will run three times, no matter which type of data you are passing from the sub, uh, data provider method to the test method, it will accept because object class is there now. Okay, run this code. The test method will run three times. You see, around pi true, around three false, around two true, okay? And uh, the sample test method got run three times uh, and uh, different type of data for different sets of data it has been run. Okay, three sets of data having different type of data. Same thing guys, if you go to the previous example in the one of the previous session I explained here, I was using string email string password here and here. Okay, here I am returning the data guys. I am returning the data. So no matter whether this data is a string format or integer format, better to uh, like you, you will see that whenever people write data provider, right? They will be using object class no matter what. Okay, whether you are giving string or integer or whatever it is. Okay, they use object class because they don't have to worry about the type of the data that they are passing uh, that they are storing into this uh, two dimensional object array and they are passing to this test method okay here string email string password the conversion will happen i guess so let's see whether it will happen or not okay let's save this uh, okay so even though you are passing this in as an object array here string email string password is there string still it should work let's see whether the uh, selenium test method will run okay but the return type i am just uh, using as uh, two dimensional object array guys as you already know any type of data can be stored into the two. you see it's working fine Okay, the conversion is automatically happening, guys. That's the reason we use the object two dimension. That's why we use object array, guys. Okay, to return the data from the data provider or data uh, data provider methods. Okay, so whenever uh, you see all the three got passed, and you see verify login test method got run three times. Here you are returning the data in the form of object array and receiving the data in the form of string parameters. That's okay, guys. That's okay. Okay, and using the parameters here. Okay, so. This is the reason guys, hope you understood like, uh, okay, I did a practical demonstration just now before you.
why we have to use object class array to return the data okay whenever you get a chance to return the data from the data provider instead of using string two dimensional array or integer two dimensional array simply use two dimensional object array guys that's enough even the real time people also will be using the two dimensional uh, array even though what type of data they are passing that doesn't matter they simply blindly go with the two dimensional object array okay while returning the data so hope guys you understood why we have to use object class array to return the data from the data provider methods in this session so that's all for this session in the next session i'm going to cover another test and topic for you till then see you bye bye